Hey, hey, how you doing? It's TJ here, another episode of the TJ Vlog. I uh, don't know what number it is, because I don't do the counting. I just title it, as always, I just title it after I've... when I'm uploading it. <laughs> after I've seen what the number of the last one was. Sorry it's been a few weeks since my last vlog episode. Um, been really, really busy a couple weekends ago. I did a weekend out in Longreach with uh, Shenanigans, which is one of the which is a new band that I've kind of been doing some work with. Great guys in that band, Mick Bell, Graham Prabiz. Uh, yeah, we went out to Longreach, which is about nine hours out west from where I live in Rockhampton. It's a hell of a trip. There is some really beautiful country, though, um, especially because it, like, it only rained like a week or two beforehand. So there was a lot of green in places that were usually red. So it's uh, one of the things I love about this uh, job that I do is that I get to see so many beautiful places in the country and uh, otherwise you wouldn't I mean you wouldn't otherwise be going to Longreach unless you had work there or a specific reason to go there so we were out there we played the uh, Longreach RSL meet and greet which was a show that was supposed to happen at the beginning of the year you know so that was supposed to happen in January late January I believe but because of the Omicron outbreak with COVID, they were shut down. They were basically told, hey, you can't have that. You can't have this uh, event. We're going to, like a licensing pool there, pulled their permission for it, which was really disappointing at the time, but they uh, got us out there beginning of April instead, which, you know, we, we appreciate because that means we still got that work from those shows. Um, last week I did, sorry, the weekend before last, I did Billa Wheeler with, um, with, uh, Overdrive, which was a little bit bittersweet because it's the last Overdrive show for the foreseeable future until, until Shane's finished this big project he's got at work, which is not going to be for, I think, at least six months. But it was really nice to play with him and we had, uh, Nikolai in. He was filling in on drums for Pete, who was unable to make it. So, and that's always that's always lovely working with Nikolai. The weekend just gone was absolutely massive for me. On the Thursday, I hosted trivia at the Calca Palms again. On Friday, I played. Uh, I did a you know did a music show at the Rocky Nats event, which is one of the largest car expos and uh, car events in the country. Then on the Saturday, the Saturday evening, I played at the Frenchville in Rockhampton, and the Sunday afternoon I played at the Railway Hotel in Yapoon. So not too much driving, thankfully, that weekend. But the big, really fun part for me, and that's not to say I didn't have fun with the trivia or the music, the part that I really enjoyed the most was on Saturday morning at Rocky Nats, Saturday lunchtime, I had my first ever wrestling match. I finally debuted after a year of training. It was myself and Tyson DeHaunt in a tag match against uh, the 17th Step, which is Stephen Stanley's and uh, EC Brownie, the red-headed heathen. So that was, uh, that was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun, you know, and when I think about it, how it went, as far as how it went, I'd set myself some goals for what I was going to consider a successful debut for me. Now, obviously, there was a lot of things that, especially if you're if you're in the wrestling industry, you'll look at you'll be able to look at it and go, "Oh, okay, yeah, you need he needs to work on that. He needs to work on that. He needs to work on that." But also, the, I, I, like I said, I set myself a few goals for what I would consider successful. You know, because I, I knew that there were going to be a lot of green moments out there. As far as things like ring positioning and stuff like that. So, um, you know, those, those goals were to remember my spots. So remember the things that I was particularly doing, going to be doing in that match when I was in the ring. It was to have a good promo. 
because they gave me a live microphone before my match to sell, you know, kind of sell the story of the match. And, you know, they, you usually don't, in indie wrestling, you don't give a rookie a, a microphone. <laughs> but I went out there and absolutely nailed my promo. And then um, I didn't hurt anyone during the match, like properly, like significantly hurt. Like it was probably one spot that I kind of hit a little bit wrong and I know I winded the other guy. And then the uh, other thing that I had set myself as a, you know, as a baseline for what I'd consider a good match was to not get lost, you know, to know where I was in the match, to know what I had to do coming up, to know what people were doing around me and to put on a good show. And I succeeded at all of those things, which was such an amazing feeling because I've spoken about this in the past where I started doing professional wrestling April last year. I started training in it partly because I've always loved professional wrestling and I've always wanted to try it out, but also because it was a means to put myself out there and challenge myself in a way that I didn't know whether I'd succeed or not. Because for the, I hate to say it, but for the decade before that, every time I was challenging myself with something new, it was always a safe bet. It was always something that I knew I'd be able to do. You know, like learning a new, like learning the baritone guitar. Things like that, you know. Um, experimenting with different styles of music with how I play and learning songs that I thought, nah, you can't do this on guitar. And then being able to do really good versions of it and things like that, you know. So this was a way of challenging myself without a safety net. This was a way of challenging myself with something that I could very easily fail at. And I still may in future. Who knows how long this career as a professional wrestler lasts, you know, this side gig. But I love it. I'm having so much fun with it. You know, um, shout, out to, shout out to the other guys in the ring. You know, shout out to Tyson DeHaunt, Steve Stanley, EC Brownie, to the ref, Lachlan Kucharski, who is, he was, you know, he's, he came in in the same rookie class that I did, and he's just going leaps and bounds with everything. To all the guys, you know, shout out to the guys I train with, uh, especially Ben. Especially Ben, who's uh, had my back since day one of the wrestling. Oh, hello. There goes my light source. <laughs> um, and, to, and obviously to Colt and Cherry. Who, you know, Colt has been, Colt has been our coach this entire time. And Cherry's been the big mama bear of the group. Helping us all through all our stuff, so... Shout out to everyone, Dallas. Yeah, uh, sorry. <clears throat> you know, shout out, shout out to Dallas. Shout out to everyone else that we've been training with as well. Tom, all those guys and girls, Alyssa. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so that's me for this episode. I just thought I'd share all the great news. I got shows coming up this weekend. On Friday night, I'm going to be at the Criterion. In Rockhampton from 8 p.m. On Saturday night, I'm going to be at the Strand Hotel in Yapoon from 8 p.m. And I believe that the Dungeons & Dragons starts up again this Sunday. So that's uh, twitch.tv slash quicksave underscore gaming. So make sure to come and check that out Sunday from 6 p.m. Queensland time. Anyway, hope you all have had an amazing couple of weeks. Let me know in the comments, you know. Tell me what you've been up to. Tell me tell me about a win you've had. Tell me about a I want to hear your successes. I want to hear, considering I've had such a big weekend, which was such a great success for me, I want to hear what was your win. Whether it's something big, whether it's something small, just tell me something really awesome that happened to you in the la since we last spoke. All right, heart you all. See you later. Cheers. TJ out.